Good morning. I'm just packing my bag with... What's that? That looks like... Ways. An old... A very old... Kawasaki key. Now, I don't know if you remember, but when I went on the volcano hunt, which was a huge 200 bike ride out about three weeks ago on Easter Sunday, there was, for the classic motorcycle of the bike run, a clear winner from every single judge, unanimous. When this bike pulled into the car park, people around me were saying, what, is that the, the special edition? Come up with me, Monica. Eddie Lawson replica, original, guaranteed, the real deal, Eddie Lawson replica, 1982 Kawasaki Z1000R. Can you just get a glimpse of it there, Monica? Hopefully that gives you a little taster of what's about to come. Because I'm not on the Bonneville, I don't have my panniers, so I've got a brand new motorcycle backpack from XL Moto. This is the XL Moto Vintage Biking Backpack. It is 100% cotton outer, as simple as you like. One pocket, just with an extra laptop sleeve. Great retro style backpack with poppers on the top to secure it, that I'll close. And then it just very simply rolls up with, I should say as well, heavy duty zip for the big front pocket. This is usually 60 euros, which is good value for a good quality vintage style backpack. But, and I honestly don't know how long this will last, 60 euros, it's currently on sale, 25 euros. 25 euros for such a good looking sturdy biking backpack and it's also got a strap across there that you can just strap like that that's a, a great deal either full price or on sale price I'll include all of the details about this backpack in the written description below but that's enough of that the weather's glorious let's head out on the eddie lawson replica here it is in the flesh an actual original real deal Eddie Lawson replica, the Kawasaki Z1000R ELR. Eddie Lawson replica, made for only two years, 1982 and 1983. Before I get to anything specific about the bike, let me give you a bit of background. Because in 1981 and 1982, Kawasaki had a legend in the making with Eddie Lawson. He rode for Kawasaki and he won the 1981 and 1982 AMA Superbike Championships in the USA. Coing in, coinciding with this was a struggle for Kawasaki with what they called the KZ1000 Kawasaki. See, they weren't selling. They were sitting in the showrooms and Kawasaki were wondering, what are we going to do to actually sell these machines? And someone came up with the idea, well, Eddie Lawson's a superstar in the making. Why don't we make a limited run special edition Kawasaki KZ1000R ELR? So they did. But Kawasaki gave the decision on pricing to the dealerships. The dealerships priced them too high and no one ended up wanting the bike. So what you had was, in theory, a very desirable bike that no one ended up wanting. These would sit in the dealerships of the USA without anyone buying them for months. Shortly afterwards, they started shipping them over to the US or from the USA to Europe. But I know what all of you Americans are thinking when you look at me, talking about this bike now you're thinking freddie that's not an elr that is not an eddie lawson bike because eddie lawson made famous the green lime green electric green kawasaki's he did not ride a white kawasaki and you're absolutely right he didn't ride a white kawasaki but for some reason that i can't figure out for 90 percent of the european market kawasaki decided to sell the elr replica or the eddie lawson replica not in the traditional lime electric green color but they sold it in this the white color so what we have here is an extremely rare white genuine elr motorcycle let's do a front to back this is and get ready for this 222 kilos it is 
102 horsepower, which is a full 23 horsepower over the original standard Z1000R. It's got uprated suspension and it's also got this unique seat along with the tank color and the side panel color. Notice this, the adjustable suspension on the rear for this ELR replica. It is, it's a heavy beast of a bike. I rode it for the first time about an hour ago and the first thing that shocked me was just at slow speed, how big physically and weight wise a bike it is. It may be 222 kilos, and often I like to say, but the weight's slow down, so it's fine. The weight is not low down, so you can feel every single kilo of that weight. And look at how far away my hands are from the, the handlebars and how far the instrument panel is away from me. And on such a big bike, it's surprising how cramped I am and the actual angle of my leg. I mean, this is a super bike of its day. And to be 222 kilos with over 100 horsepower on such a brute of a bike, you can just look back at those pictures of Eddie Lawson riding it. You really, really have to manhandle a bike like this. These are, Eddie Lawson or not, now a highly, highly desirable Japanese motorcycle. Actually, probably in reality, one of the most desirable Japanese motorcycles. The 1980s Z1000s are hot, hot property. I mean, just look at it with everything as standard, the original exhaust, the slight gold tint to the rim with the silver around it, and this very iconic rear section of the tail there, all plastic with that. Just complete kind of box section rear light. I have to read you something before we head off because Kawasaki were very keen to sell the dream of this bike and hook everything in with that Eddie Lawson racing pedigree and really make the, any buyers, any prospective buyers of this bike feel like they could be an Eddie Lawson for the road. So have a listen to this. This is from the original sales brochure. As you feed into the first set of S's, everything suddenly becomes clear. This is what sports bike riding is all about. That undescribed, almost mystical communication between rider and machine. The rider who knows what needs to be done and the machine that is not only willing, but capable of delivering it. Precision. You tell the new KZ1000R what you want, and with a shift of your weight and a gentle tug of the bars, it follows your chosen lines precisely. Accelerate brake and downshift. Bank left, lean right. You and your Kawasaki do it again and again with a smoothness you thought was reserved only for riders of the caliber of Eddie Lawson. Not anymore. You're on the new Kawasaki KZ1000R Eddie Lawson replica. And deep down inside, you know that if this was a racetrack ahead of you and your Kawasaki, you would be taking the checkered flag and celebrating the good times.
feel so near oh, California, all the sense is clear When the Eddie Lawson replica came out in 1982, it was already starting to get a little bit long in the tooth with regards to how modern the motorcycle was at its core. See, water cooling had come into play from about the mid to late 1970s, and this was still an air-cooled motorcycle. So part of the reason why these were never a huge success story is that the 1980s were moving so fast with the era of sports bikes and superbikes that if you were even a year or two behind the trend, you were going to be completely left behind. When everyone was going to the dealerships to buy their sports bikes, they were looking for the latest and greatest. They were looking for water cooling. They were looking for a single shock at the back with sports bikes. This, as an air-cooled motorcycle, when it came out in 1982, was already slightly behind the curve. And after riding it, it's a 1982 bike, it's 40 years old now, it feels every single one of those 40 years old. It feels like one of the most intimidating motorcycles I've ridden. Not because of the savage power, but just the physical size of it. Any type of maneuvering you do, whether it's to push it back, to move it forward, to do a three-point turn, or even medium pace riding, you can feel all of that weight. The leg position, it's not that I'm, I'm having to stretch my legs too much and I'm six foot one, but you know, when you're up like that and you've got this big heavy bike, it, it really is. It's an experience that takes over everything. You're constantly, constantly aware of it. I almost have no idea how Eddie Lawson and all of the other racers in the early 1980s, and Eddie Lawson was 23 years old when he won, how they managed to manhandle these bikes around a racetrack is, to me, almost mind-blowing. I mean, you know, the suspension, the brakes, th there's nothing here that feels anything like we would class as modern now. And that 102 horsepower in the engine, it now, 40 years on, doesn't feel remotely fast. That's the truth. It doesn't. It's still a beautiful engine, but it doesn't feel fast. It doesn't feel that powerful compared to modern day equivalents. So as a bike, it's an incredible experience, but dynamism wise compared to anything like we know as modern day sports bikes or super nakeds oh, it's a million miles off nowadays That is one of the most beautiful looking cars I've ever seen in my life. I just see it park up right next to us. Look at the little chrome circular wing mirrors as well, everything. And it's, I think they call that the fastback, just with the louvers on the back quarter windscreen or windows. That, that is breathtakingly stunning. It's like a, a joke that it's parked up right next to us. Wow. I have to try and take my mind off that that's parked right next to us now. So, back on to the Kawasaki. The bike in question, which is 
funnily enough, parked right next to a modern Kawasaki. That is a Swedish bike. It was imported over to Tenerife about four years or four weeks ago, I should say. And the Eddie Lawson replicas themselves, because Eddie Lawson won the AMA Superbike Championships in the US in 81 and 82. These came out, the ELRs, in 82, and they stopped in 83. And the reason they stopped in 83 is because Eddie Lawson switched to Yamaha. When he switched to Yamaha, they got rid of the name Eddie Lawson Replica and they changed it to Superbike Replica. So that's why you'll only see these from 82 to 83. Prices, you may have guessed, these are extremely desirable motorcycles, not just because it's a Kawasaki Z1000, which is desirable in its own right, but also because it's a Kawasaki ELR. If you're looking in the UK, they are, well, they're incredibly rare anywhere. UK, you're looking at 11K plus. In the US, I've only been able to find two. One is $20,000 and the other is $36,000, which is huge, but it's only got 1,700 miles on the clock and it's a show winning bike. So you can see there's a big range in prices. And my guess is you won't be able to get them for close to 10K for much longer. Something else to bear in mind, this model of Kawasaki was, it, it was a very popular thing to do to turn your Kawasaki Z1000 into an Eddie Lawson replica. Put on that iconic front headlamp, which funnily enough is what the guy, Tony, who got me into biking did. He had one of these with an 1100 engine he put in and he put that fairing on the front. So that's extremely popular. So when you're looking for them, just make sure that you're looking out for an Eddie Lawson replica and not someone who's done an Eddie Lawson tribute to the ELR. You know, watching that stunningly beautiful Ford Mustang drive off perfectly sums up the reality of classic vehicle ownership. See, that was an automatic Mustang, yet somehow even that cut out twice before they headed off from their coffees. And the Kawasaki is in a similar vein. That may be a 60s car, this is an 80s bike, but the reality is, as you look from afar, they are the coolest vehicles on the road, but living with them, they're hard work. I feel borderline shattered after riding this for a little bit around Tenerife. It's big, it's heavy, it's got a lack of dynamism. You're slightly worried that it may cut out in heavy traffic because it's overheating. Just, oh, just everything about it is 30 to 40 percent harder work than riding a modern day motorcycle. But the truth is no one cares about that. No one will be looking at this bike and thinking, oh bugger, it's not as dynamic as a new one. I, I think I'll leave it. People buy these bikes for the nostalgia and importantly, and especially with a limited run special edition like this, they buy these bikes because they are a superb future investment and the surest fire thing to a bang on classic you can get. See, when Eddie Lawson was racing for Kawasaki, he was a superstar in the making. He had won two championships with Kawasaki. However, after he left Kawasaki, he went on to win four Grand Prix championships and he's included in three separate Hall of Fame accounts. He's a Hall of Famer three times over. So he went on after Kawasaki to cement his place as an all-time great with motorcyclists and motorcycle racing. So you've got that legacy of Eddie Lawson coupled with the fact this bike is now 40 years old and it was made an incredibly limited number run. You've got one of the most desirable Japanese motorcycles from probably the last 40 years or so. So this is definitely not a motorcycle you'll be using as a daily rider, but as a collector's piece. And the reality is you're only going to be finding these in collections when people sell them off, or you'll probably see them in a few museums dotted around the place. The chances of actually seeing one of these on the road, vanishingly rare. So I feel incredibly privileged to have been able to use it. Huge thank you to Richard for lending me the bike for the day. It really does feel like an honor to actually have this genuine Eddie Lawson replica on the roads and be able to ride it and test it out. It's been, it's been a complete honor. Thank you so much, him. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. Please do give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts on this bike. We'll see you in the next one.